Spirit, namaste. Saints and sages of all times, of all places, namaste. O ye powers that be, namaste. Sweep clear our path. Sweep clear our paths. O oh, infinite Lord of life, we call upon thee at this moment to bring us that which we need along the path to enlightenment. Bring it to us swiftly, surely, and most, most harmoniously. O oh, infinite Lord of life, bless us. Let us attune to life that we might be of service to bring unto others that which is needed most, not which our ego wishes, but that which is needed. May we be an ever greater blessing unto all life forms. Free them from all limitations. Free me from all limitations that I might be a blessing unto all life forms. Each of us says this prayer for ourselves, asking to be freed, to be a blessing. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. Namaste. Welcome. Welcome to my heart and welcome to our Sunday Sangha. I hope that on this beautiful May Day you find yourself filled with peace, if not at this moment when we finish our gathering. Aham Brahmasmi. Aham Brahmasmi. Aham Brahmasmi, the great yogic phrase, the great watchword, the great watch phrase. I am, I am the creative principle. You speak it for you, Aham. You are the creative principle. God is not creating your life. So don't blame him or her or it. It is you and you alone that create your karma, that can soften your karma, that can dissolve your karma, that can take joy in your karma. You, 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 my beloved, it's you. You have this power, you have this capacity. What's the problem? 
What's the problem? The problem is blaming others. Not you. You don't blame others. It's the mind stuff. It's the training of the mind. That's all it is. Kriya Yoga. The mystical path of Kriya Yoga is predicated upon the law of karma, the law of cause and effect. This law of cause and effect carries from this moment to the next moment, this month to the next month, this breath to the next breath, this lifetime to the next lifetime. You are immortal. That which you feed today grows tomorrow. That which you feed today, you continue to feed tomorrow unless you do something to change that which you are feeding. You must do something. The key is action. Kriya, that's why we call it Kriya. Kriya is sacred action. Yoga is yoking the mind and the body together. Now I'm sure that for years you've heard this wonderful phrase that is used throughout many, many mystical traditions, if not all. Seek out your own illumination with ever greater diligence. Seek out your illumination. I remember the first time I thought that. I thought, Man, that's a nice phrase. Seek out your own illumination. I like that. That's good. Now what? What do I do? <laughs> How do I seek out my own illumination? What does that entail? You know, if I'm going someplace, there's usually a map on how to get there. If I want to go visit Bodhigrahananda in Italy, I know I have to get on an airplane or a boat. Or wait until the water freezes over and walk across the land. But I have a map on how to get there. Right? I need a map on how to get there. What is the map to your illumination? You have to know where you're going. You have to know what you're seeking. What does it mean you know, to be illumined? Does it mean you glow? Do you shine? Eh, yes, you will find that as illumination comes, there is a glow, a shine that occurs. But that's not what we're speaking about. Illumination is the attainment of samadhi. That's ah, another Sanskrit word. What does that mean? The attainment of samadhi, well, it means universal, balanced, self-conscious awareness, love, universal love, universal understanding of the reality, not intellectually, but a true noetic experience. All right, how do I get there? What do I do? Well, the first step is to recognize that you are the creator of your life. Now, this is not meant to say that you are to blame yourself or that you are to criticize yourself or that you are to whip yourself with a wet noodle if there's something about your life that you don't care for. But it does mean that you are to say, aha, I see. If I created this, then there must be a way that I can find to reform it, to dissolve it, to soften it so that the karma is more harmonious. What is the karma? You know, people ask, what is karma? What is the karma? Somebody asked the other day, asked me, well, you know, what, which of life events are karma? It's all karma. It's all karma. Your being here is my karma. My good, good karma. I am blessed every time I come to share meditation with you, and I hope you too are blessed. But you bless me immensely with your vibrations, with your seeking. 
with your inspiring me to say, oh, what little tiny bit do I know that might be of help? And then I find that it's of help, as much a help to me, if not more, than it could possibly be to you. Now, karma is your thoughts, your words, your actions. But let's, karma is, occurs, will occur. There is karma that will manifest upon the earth plane, upon the astral plane, and upon the more subtler realms, in the more subtler realms. Your dream states, that's your astral karma, part of your astral karma. Your awakening states, that's your earth karma. And then there are subtler, subtler, subtler states in which the karma can manifest. Not all your karma manifests in this lifetime. And really to keep it very simple for you, there's the karma of um, the present existence, your present incarnation, if you will. And then the next existence. And then more remote existences. There's also, that's the reapening of the karma. There's also the past, the karma of the past. But at this time, what we're really wanting to understand is how to soften your karma. How to walk the road to enlightenment. What do you do? What do you do? What is necessitated? Well, the first thing is really, we have to set the ego aside and recognize that we don't always know what is best for us in the long run. Our ego thinks it knows what is best. But if you have the capacity to turn your, put your ego aside and say, I know in this universe and in all the wonderful universes, there are powers that be that are greater than I am, that have greater awareness than I do, that will help me. They don't control me, they're not puppeteers, but they will reveal to me that which needs to be done. And thus, I put my own wants aside, my own desires aside, my own dreams aside. This is what you put aside for a bit. And you say now, let me ask for what I need. What do I need? on this road to enlightenment. I don't need a big heavy piece of luggage, I am thinking. But give me that which I need. Show me how to cultivate those attributes that I need. So the first I would say to you is attune your mind to gentleness gentleness, graciousness, if you will. Step aside. <laughs> Step aside. Your life does not need to be rushed. It does not need to be harsh. I know, my beloved, that some of you feel your life has to be rushed. I hear you. I've been there. I still have days where it seems like, it's a good idea to meditate. It's the only time there's a breath. This is not the way to be. When we're rushed, we can't be gentle. When we're rushed, it's hard to be gracious. When we're rushed, it's hard to be kind to others and kind to this. Yeah, it's difficult. Tune your mind to gentleness and ask yourself, how do you need to how does a gentle person behave? You know, how do they speak? What do they do? What kind of music do they listen to? What kind of food do they eat? Where do they walk? What do they do every day to attune their mind? 
to gentleness. Secondly, attune your mind to bliss. Not this crazy, 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 ah, no, bliss. The bliss state that you'll have in a few minutes when we meditate together. The bliss, the bliss of Ananda. Ananda, Ananda, Ananda. You see in our lineage of Swamis and in our lineage of, of um, the Kriya Yoga lineage, our names all end with Ananda. It means that this that comes before it will bring us bliss. It reminds us with each speaking of the name, I'm attuning to Ananda, the bliss of life. Now, sometimes that's hard, isn't it? When you look at the world around you and you see people who are housing insecure, food insecure, water insecure, peace insecure, where you see bombs going off, or you see guns going off, or you see my, you know, fighting going off. And my beloved, where you see cruelty going from one person to another, cruel thoughts, cruel words, critical thoughts, critical words. Mm. How can you attune your mind to bliss in the midst of all this? Isn't that just being blind? Ah, oh, no. Let's say, wow. <laughs> on this beautiful, wondrous planet in which we live, which we have incarnated, of which there are more than your mind can comprehend. But on this one, we have the opportunity for enlightenment in these bodies. So we're limited by the places we're in, but we have the opportunity to experience bliss and enlightenment. Do it. Slow down. Take a breath. Let go of the criticism of the mind and find bliss. Probably um, the thought that is the, the uh, certainly up there as a big block to bliss, a big obstacle to bliss, is the idea that of judgment, the idea that you're going to be judged. Um, whether it is that God is going to judge you, whether it is another person is going to judge you, mama, papa, brother, sister, husband, wife, friend, boss. There's the idea that you're going to be judged. And how can you be happy? How can you be filled with bliss if somebody's going to come along and judge you? Or recognize the weakness of your personality and come right in and poke it and hurt you. Yeah. We need to be able to put this aside. Put it aside. You put it aside by letting go of your judgment of others. Now, you know, most of you are not judgmental. I know that. But I would say that if you carefully look at the thoughts that rise and fall in your mind, what you will find is a bit of a marak. My guru's words, a bit of a miracle. You will see, aha. You know, every time I think of that person or that circumstance, I judge. Every time my mind goes back to that hurt, hurt I judge. Ah, my throat caught. I had a memory of a hurt and my throat caught. I could almost say it. I judge. I had an experience last night. I was talking to my husband about a family event and I said, I have to do more forgiveness. You know, this happened all those years ago and I still am saddened by this event. I know better than that. I know what that does to my happiness, to my bliss. And 
and I obviously have not done enough spiritual discipline on that particular one instant to free me from it. So I need to go back and do it again. You need to free yourself from the judgments of your own mind. When you leave the earth, my beloved, when you leave the earth, God is not going to judge you. There's not going to be a whole bunch of people judging you. You will judge yourself for what you have done and what you think, what you perceive that you have failed to do. Oh my, that's harder than having the Divine One judge you. And the Divine is God is love, God is compassion, God is understanding. We need to become like the Divine towards ourselves and then towards others to forgive for the mistakes that are made, the little missteps that are made. You know, I was on the phone the other day with someone who, they made a mistake. And as a result of the mistake, there was some legal paperwork that had to be reissued. It was a typographical error. That's all it was. They made a typo error. One letter was off, you know. And so the name was wrong. And so I, you know, called him and said, I'm sorry, but could you please take care of this, you know? And you could hear, oh, 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 I'm very, very sorry. I'm really sorry. I said, Don't get upset about it. It was just a little tiny error. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I said, you don't have to say you're sorry. Let's just fix it. You, I know you'll fix it. It's clear to me you'll fix it. But you don't have to punish yourself a long time along with it, with fixing it. Fixing it does not require that you feel badly about a small human mistake. Now, please hear that. How often did you make a small mistake? Just a small thing, you know? And you can see that your mind, instead of saying, okay, I'll, I'll fix it, thanks, that your mind wants to go, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I shouldn't have done that, oh, you know. If we were in a world of perfection, you and I would not be here. Stop beating yourself for those little things that you do, those little errors that you make. Stop calling yourself names. This is the path to enlightenment. It's the path to wisdom. It's the path to bliss. Letting go of your pleasure of criticism. Letting go of your attachment and your addiction to self-criticism, to judgment of yourself and others. Let go of that addiction. It is an addiction. Let go of it. Replace it with enthusiasm. Okay. Well, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. And then when you have a day that you've tried and tried and tried and it hasn't worked, you look at the astrological aspects and you say, maybe I should wait. Or you don't look at the aspects. You look at the symbols and you say, you know, I tried this twice today. It's not working. Maybe I'll take a breath and wait until tomorrow. Tomorrow comes. Maybe it's the day for it. Maybe it's not. Maybe you have to wait two days. We don't need to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing against the wall. And that is what so many of us do. Why? Because you want to do it now, 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 in my way, in my time. That's not the path to enlightenment. It's not the path to bliss. So step three is to attune yourself to wisdom to attune yourself to the nature of life, to attune yourself to all of the wisdom that surrounds you. Learn from everything. Learn from the person next to you who makes a mistake, or from the person next to you who stumbles, and in their stumbling, 
you can see, you can see, oh, you know, if they'd gone this way instead of this way, then this, this would be okay, this wouldn't have happened. But they didn't. And all you can do, what you can do, not all you can do, what you can do is learn from them, my beloved. Learn. Learn from everybody. The path to your illumination, the path to samadhi, the path to balanced self-awareness, to universal love, is to know, oh, okay, I'm going to give up my addiction to judgmentalness. I'm going to give up my addiction to fear. Those two are very closely linked. Judgmentalness, fear, and anger. They're friends. Or if you prefer, fear, anger, judgmentalness, or judgmentalness, anger, fear. However you want to say it, make it an acronym that you can see. A gaffe, if you will, a mistake, an error. But it is to be perceived as an error in thinking, um, attunement to, attachment to a thought that is not the correct thought for you to think along the path that you are going, in the direction you're going trying to move towards your illumination, your enlightenment. The path to enlightenment is a path. It's not the highway from the south of France to the north of Austria. It's the path from the south of France to the north of Austria. And along the way, there are way stations. You can stop and get a glass of water or a perfect cappuccino if you're in Italy. But the path to enlightenment requires that you use discernment and that you keep in your mind's eye always as a guiding light, a guiding principle. What am I trying to accomplish? Know it. I'm seeking enlightenment. I'm seeking bliss. I'm seeking wisdom. Is this going to bring that to me? Is watching violent films going to bring that to me? No. Is reading violent communication from other people going to bring that to me? No. Is watching plays that are violent and miserable going to bring that to me? No. No. Neti, 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 neti. It's not going to bring you enlightenment. It's going to stir the emotions in your mind and in your body. Your body's going to get sick. It's not going to bring joy to you. I am not saying ignore the reality. I am saying focus on the reality. Focus on that balanced reality. Focus on the goodness. Make your life a testament. Make your smiles, your graciousness, your kindness, your listening a blessing. Put aside your fears. I said, put aside your judgments. Judgment, anger, fear, they all go together. They all go together. It's hard sometimes to put those habits aside. It's hard sometimes. But when you do, you will find the way to greater beauty, to greater blessings, to greater bliss. I've been meditating for several days, as I usually do before we gather on Sundays, trying to feel what you needed to hear the most, to, to hear you, if you will, to hear you in the inner eye, what you needed, to hear what you were missing, what the 
lack was, if you will. And it seemed to me, it seems to me today, that you don't believe that you can find happiness, that you don't really believe that you're worthy of the goodness of life, the blessings of life, the happiness of life. At some level, you hear these words, seek out your own illumination with greater diligence, and you think, okay, sure. But you've let the habits of the past take over today, as we all do, as we all do. As my guru, in my guru's words, the ghosts of the past wish to live again. And it's what his guru would say and my guru would say. And they are living again now, here and now, at this time and this place. Let go of your ego self. Pay greater attention to what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're watching, what you're, what you're participating in. You know, are you spending time with people that bring you joy? Are you spending time with people that are angry and unhappy and they don't bring joy with you? Can you bring them joy? And if you can't, then you have to say, wow, there's something wrong here. There is something wrong. I need to do something to bring greater joy into my life. This does not mean disregarding others, but it does mean we need to think about you need to reflect upon and think about your life. What you surround yourself with is what you will become. You carry a briefcase, you'll become a businessman. Carry a guitar, and you'll become a rock and roll musician. Or you'll become a musician of some sort. You know? Carry a spatula, and you'll become a chef. Carry a gardening tool, and you'll become a gardener. And carry the ohm you'll become enlightened. And so I would like to share with you the last for today secret, if you will, on the path to enlightenment. All the mystical paths, mysticism is very different than theology. Remember that mysticism is not theology. Kriya Yoga is not theology. It is not a theology. It is a mystical path which requires you to have your own primary experiences of life. Be clear about that. Learn from everyone. But here is the secret. One of the great secrets, not the, but one of the great secrets. If we attune, call upon the powers of be, if you call upon the powers of be and say in a prayer, which I'll give you, or something like it, devote a part of your life energy every day, calling upon the powers of be to attune you to the suffering and the anguish in this world and to help all of those in need. You attune and you say, you call upon all the powers of be. You think they'll come to you. They'll come to you. Everybody who can help you, every being who can help you, all the powers of be, all the beauty, the glory, the wondrous mysteries of life will come and help you. You, you, and me too. And as you soften your karma, as you learn to be kinder, more compassionate, more gentle with all of those around you, even those you don't know, particularly those you don't know, guess what? Every time you soften your karma, the karma of all beings is softened. Every time you are able to perform a Kriya, to soften your karma so that you can handle it better in the future, neutralize it so you don't have to experience it, learn the lesson through another person. Bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them. But attuning and 
taking just a minute and saying, help me, join with me as we attune to all the difficulties, all the suffering that's here in the world, that it may be softened, that it may be harmonized. And what you're doing is you're not blocking all this out. You're not worrying about it. You're not noodling about it. You're not trying to solve it. All right. Let your ego go aside. You're not trying to solve it for others. You're not trying to solve it for me. You're not trying to solve the, the problems of life, but you're saying, let me be aware of it. And in my awareness, let me call upon all those who can help. You hear when I do an invocation, when I do a prayer, saints and sages of all religions, of all times, of all places. Most beloved Ishta Devata in all of thy names and all of thy forms. A person's Ishta Devata may be the Lord Jesus. It may be the beloved Mary. It might be Buddha. It might be Kuan Yin. It might be Avalokita Kishwara Bodhisattva. It might be Tara. It might be Shiva. It might be Jesus. Did I say Lord Jesus? I think I already did. <laughs> Twice in one, one breath. Allah. Ah, oh, yes, it might be Allah. It doesn't matter. I don't have to know the names. You don't have to know the names. We have to be able to reach beyond our ego and say, whoever it is that can be of help to these people, people, to these life forms, to these beings, come and help them. That's all. That's all you have to do. Maybe it's two minutes out of your day. Maybe it's three. But my beloved, it will make such a difference in your life. Now you enhance this, you um, multiply the effectiveness of it. If you have an enemy, we all have people that we think of as the other, people we don't like. You know, you don't have to, you don't go out and find one if you don't have one. But there's always people in your life that you don't favor. Here's the prayer. O ye powers that be, I call upon thee to help insert the name. May he be blessed upon his road to enlightenment that all of his needs may be met. May all of his needs be met that he might become enlightened. Let me tell you, on the road to enlightenment, <laughs> we're all on the road to enlightenment. We all have different experiences. But you don't have to worry about it. You're not saying, you know, well, I don't want him to have this, or I don't want him to have that, or, oh, I wish that he could, you know, blah, blah, blah. Somebody said to me last week at breakfast, oh, my goodness, <laughs> a person visiting, and they said, you know, I pray every day for so-and-so. I said, well, that's really nice. And she says, yes, and then she named a horrible, horrible, horrible thing. I pray that blah, 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 blah will happen. And I said, really? Okay, well, I pray for that person every day, too, and this is what I do. Not criticizing her, but thinking, oh, I don't want to do that. For whoever you pray for, my beloved, however you pray, wherever you send your thoughts, that is your life energy. Your life energy that you're spending doing that. Don't waste your life energy wishing ill on another person. Don't waste your life energy speaking cruelly or harmfully of another person. We all have karma. We all have to live through that karma. Use the mystical practice. Call upon the powers of be and say, there's a key. On the road to enlightenment, may they have that which they need. You know far better than I that which is needed. May they have what they need on the road to enlightenment. Swiftly, surely, 
and always say, and most, most harmoniously. In the words of my guru, don't ever leave that out. We want to make sure that as we are praying for others and we pray for ourselves that we remember to say most, most, most harmoniously. So what have you learned this morning? I hope. What have you heard? I hope. There is a path to enlightenment. It's not some obscure phrase. There is a way to get there. The way to get there begins with becoming softer and gentler less aggressive, less margin in your life, in your speaking, in your thoughts, and in your actions. It's actually thoughts, speaking, and actions is the way that it works mystically. Let go of your desiring to be right. Let go of your judgmentalness. Let go of your ego's need to judge. Let it go. I'm not saying you have to do it forever, but can't you just do it for a nanosecond? Just a nanosecond is enough. A nanosecond here, a nanosecond there, pretty soon you're going to have a minute or a second, if you will. Yeah, pretty soon you'll have a second, and then, you know, you'll have five seconds, and then you'll have a minute, and then, who knows? You do it long enough, and you might let go of the judgmentalness, and it'll be out of your world for... 50% of the time or 51% of the time, you're making progress. Do you see? You're making progress. It's not a super highway. I didn't say it has to be boom, boom, accomplish everything at once. Little by little by little by little by little. Attune to bliss. You know, go outside, see the beauty, look at the art, look at the flowers, look at the trees, look at the highways, look at the wheels, anything that brings you bliss, that brings you a sense of wonder, of awe. Read great poetry, listen to music. And then finally, attune to wisdom. Learn from others, my beloved. Learn from everybody around you. Everyone, you should learn from them. You do not have to experience their karma or their life experiences. Learn from them. Gain wisdom along your path. And use that wisdom to see without judgmentalness the reality of life. Learn it to see. And when you see, then say, well, Okay, what do I need to do now? Let me use some of my life energy to become a blessing to others. And with that, I would ask you, as we do on Sundays, please join with me in a meditation to send our blessings and our love. Namaste. Thank you for the blessing of your presence, for the blessing of your spiritual energy, for your yoga city. And we will head into meditation now. Sit with your spine erect. Place your hands on the om, in the Om Mudra upon your thighs. The index finger and the thumb together and the other three fingers pointing towards your spinal column, the center of your body. Turn your head to the left, exhaling twice with the resurrection breath. And bring your head back to the center and begin to watch your breath. Use the sipping breath and draw the energy from the limbs to the trunk. From the trunk to the spinal column. from the base of the spine to the sun center. And now pull that energy as a golden ball of light out in front of you. Expand it and sweep it around your body, moving counterclockwise. Move to the left. Encase your body three times in golden light.
and now ascend. Ascend to the high place. above the room you're in, above the building you're in. Ascend to the high place of meditation. Oh, infinite spirit, of the universe. Namaste. Saints and sages of all religions. Namaste. Most beloved ancestors of our birth lineage and all the lineages to whom we attune. Namaste. Most beloved Ishtadevata, in all of thy names and all of thy forms, Namaste. O ye powers that be, who have attained self-illumination through the path of wisdom, Attune to us that the suffering of the universe might be lessened. Assist us in removing pain and suffering. Resulting from ignorant past actions. Assist us in letting go of the judgmentalness of our mind. Free our spiritual pathway from all obstacles. Lead us to the shore of wisdom and bliss that we might find and fill and share in the light and life, the infinite life that fills countless universes. O oh, ye powers of be, thou knowest better than we that which is needed. We call upon thee at this moment to send forth thy blessings, to fill those needs. We call upon thee to send forth thy blessings to Huda Hadid as she walks with many, many others to the end of this incarnation. May all of those leaving this incarnation be blessed. May they let go of their judgmentalness. May they remember their good deeds. Om Shanti 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 O ye powers that be, pour forth thy blessings upon all of those life forms, all of those beings who are living with water and security. May their thirst be quenched. food and security. May their hunger be filled. Housing and security.
May their needs be met. Health and security. May they be healed as they need most. Turn your attention to your sun center, a point between your eyes. Watch your breath. Most beloved and precious Ishta Devata, O oh ye powers of be, thou knowest better than we that which we need that which we need most upon the path to enlightenment. Bring that to us now, harmoniously, swiftly, and surely. Feel the golden circles of light pouring down upon your crown center. Flowing over your body, through your body, filling within your body every cell with anandic bliss. Ananda. 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 And now take that radiant bliss that fills every cell of your being. And from your sun center, you and your Ishta, your Ishta and you, the powers that be, and you and the powers that be, radiate forth that bliss upon the earth plane, around the earth plane, within the earth plane, that all beings be blessed. Let us join together in chanting Ananda. Radiate forth that which you are. Radiate forth that which is within thee. See the golden rings of light pouring down. And let us chant this nine times. We will chant in rounds of three. Ananda. Ananda, Ananda. I 
again. Ananda. 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 And again, again. Ananda. 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 Feel that golden light radiate forth, sending your blessings to soften the karma of all life forms. Thou art blessed. Be thou blessed, be thou blessed, be thou triply blessed with each breath that you take, that thou will become an ever greater blessing to all life forms, become gentler, kinder, wiser, as you walk the path to your own enlightenment, let go of the habits of the past and pick up the habits of joy of the ever-present now. Dhyana mulam guru murtir Puja mulam guru padam Mantra mulam guru vakyam Moksha mulam guru kripa Moksha mulam guru kripa Om Namah Shavaya Gurave Satyatananda Murtaye Nishprapanjaya Shantaya Niralambaya Teja se Om Om Guru Bhyo Noha Om Om Guru Bhyo Noha Om Om Guru Bhyo Noha Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste, G. Namaste. What a blessing it is to be with you, to see all of you, to feel your blessings today. Namaste, G.